Good evening, everyone. And welcome to Church of the Ascension on this, the third Sunday of Advent. My name is Ann Johnson. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Daniel, assisted by Deacon Gary. The Mass intention for this liturgy is for the living Ronald Ford and the, for the deceased Ken Barkley. Today's Mass is being streamed live. We are united today both in person and with our online family. We ask those present with us to kindly silence their cell phones. Please take a bulletin or visit the website for details regarding events at Ascension. Here are a few events happening in the Commons after Mass and this week in the parish. You are invited to celebrate the first day of the Simbang Gaba of Novena here at, Asc at uh, Ascension with our Filipino family members. Mass is this Tuesday, December 14, at 7 p.m. Mark your calendars for Ascension's Advent Reconciliation Service on Monday, December 20. There will be 10 priests to hear confessions. Please return all giving tree gifts unwrapped no later than this Sunday, December 12. 100 Christmas food baskets will be given away to local families in need. Food donations no later than Saturday, December 18 at 7 p.m. Next Sunday, December 19, is Christmas food sorting in the ACC from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. At 1 p.m., families arrive for food and gift distribution. Wear a mask and your festive Christmas attire and come join in the fun. Bring a snack to share and pizza will be provided at lunchtime. Help us to spread the love of Jesus through this joyous mystery. Available for purchase in the Commons this weekend, the 50th anniversary dinner dance is February 5th. Pre-sale tickets are available this weekend in the Commons. Tickets are $25. Tickets will not be on sale again until January 1, 2020. The Knights of Columbus are selling Keep Christ in Christmas Magnets after Mass today in the Commons. Also available are the 50th anniversary ornaments, which are $15. Please remain seated as we recite the prayer of the Holy Spirit. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Today, we light the third candle. We rejoice in the knowledge that our Lord is coming soon. In Philippians, it is written, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. As we light this candle, we rejoice knowing that in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah has come to save all peoples. Galdete 
Galdete, Galdete. Would you please rise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, which is known also Gaudete Sunday. It reminds us to rejoice. We are called to rejoice for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. In a very special way also today, I'd like to celebrate for those people who have died with tornado so that God may receive them for eternal rest and to pray for their family members, especially for their loss, but also for the loss of everything. We pray for them so that they can have healing and comfort. Coming together as God's family, let us acknowledge your sins and ask for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attend the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemnly worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter of Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Be not discouraged. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Savior. 
Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors can be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, and what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His willowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff will be burned in unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday is also called the Gaudete Sunday, meaning joyful Sunday. What must we do? Is a question message that dominates in the liturgy of the word, more particularly the gospel passage. Indeed, it is our question also during this Advent season, before Christmas, 
For example, parishioners asked themselves, what must we do to celebrate Christmas better? Family members may ask themselves, what must we do during this festive season, this time around? Professionals also may ask themselves, what must we do differently during this season? In all cases, this is a real question that preoccupies us and it helps us to better prepare for Christ's coming. On this Gaudete Sunday, we are going to reflect on two messages as preached by John the Baptist, which will help us to hope and trust in Christ's coming. In the first reading, what must the people of Israel do? They are invited to rejoice because God will forgive their iniquities, renew them by their love, and he will be present among them. But for us, Christ to return, is it enough reason to rejoice too? It is. But more important, Christ's presence in our life is remarkable as experienced particularly through the holy sacraments that we receive at holy mass. Yes, he is present, therefore, we are invited to rejoice. On the other hand, which re rejoicing is passage talking of? In fact, this true joy should not be confused with a laughter of a drunkard. However, it is a joy of inner satisfaction rooted in the Lord as St. Paul points in the second reading, rejoice in the Lord always. Let us rejoice because Christmas, the commemoration of Christ's birth, is near. For Christ will be present in our life if we welcome him with well-disposed hearts. Turning to the gospel passage, we find John the Baptist preparing people to welcome the Messiah. He simply did so by baptizing and preaching to them the good news which is Christ coming. In the passage, the preaching of John is in the dialogue form, which is dominated by the question, what must we do? Moreover, the three groups of people, after listening to John's preaching, they asked him, what must we do? Not here the question carries a communitarian aspect as indicated by we. In summary way, from this preaching of John the Baptist in this passage, we can distinguish two main aspects, namely ethical aspect and secondly, messianic aspect. Let us begin with ethical aspect. In the first instance, the first group to react by saying to John the Baptist, what must we do, was a multitude of the crowd. What is proposed to them is interesting in terms of having of stable society today. In other words, John's message is clear because he advocates conversion of the heart. After baptism, which is an external manifestation of conversion, one is required to change his or her actions. In a more concrete way, John proposes to all the three groups, the crowd, the tax collectors, and the soldiers, to live in harmony and peace with their neighbors. This implies that the one who has no basic needs, such as clothing and food, they should be provided for hands sharing. Again, once noting the tax collectors, the soldiers and other professions are invited to be just as respective in their work. 
Here, John the Baptist invites the professionals not to abandon their work or to change their professions, but to change their way of dealing with their crimes. That is true conversion, the inner conversion which manifests itself in external actions. The soldiers were told by John the Baptist to be contended with their salaries. Are you contended with who you are, what you have, and what you live with? Be contended with what you earn during this festival season, and of course, work hard to get more in a justified way. What must we do before Christmas as a parish, as a family, as an institution, and as an individual? Let us share with the needy our basic needs because sharing is caring. Caring is loving. Loving is godly. And God is, God, is love. The last aspect in John's preaching is about the Messiah. In this passage from verse 15 to 18, the question responded to is what God is going to do. John had preached about the eschatology in verse 7 to 9, and that is why people asked if he was the Messiah. In other words, people experienced Advent fulfilled because they thought that John is the Messiah. Announced in the old prophecies, in order to satisfy their curiosity, John responded by defining himself as the one who will be decreased so as the Messiah increases. John was baptizing with water but the Messiah will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, which will be fulfilled in the Pentecost. John the Baptist reminds his listeners to live and expect a Messiah soon. Therefore, they are invited to live a hopeful and joyful Advent because the Messiah will come soon. To conclude on this third Sunday of Advent, we are invited to be joyful because the loving God is present and has sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us. What must we do during this Advent period? Let us not only be prepared physically, but more sharing with poor. Pray visit the sick, and clothe the naked in our society. That's what we have been doing in our church, but Ascension is always known for social ministry. Let us be ready to extend our hands as we share with our brothers and sisters before we celebrate Christmas. Christmas without sharing, that's not a Christmas, and that's not Ascension. Amen. Amen. Please stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things we are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O oh God, you command us to prepare the way for Christ the Lord as we now offer our prayers with humble hearts. For our Holy Father, may he increase his ability to break down barriers and assumptions that would put limits on God's love for humanity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the laity, to emulate the teachings of St. John the Baptist, to proclaim the gospel with their lives, and provide an invitation for others to walk closer with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a people around the world in areas with high rates of COVID infection and limited access to vaccinations and medical care, especially in Father Daniel's homeland of Tanzania, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and suffering, lonely and despairing, that they may know the comfort of God and confidence of his presence, especially Deacon Miles Pocata, Romeo Cruz. Those names of chronically ill listed in the bulletin and for those names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all who now sleep in eternal peace of Christ know the promised that is for them, especially John Whalen, father of Sheila, Sheila Rome, Earl Ingram, father of Rosa McElroy, and for our deceased weekend mayor's intentions. Ken Barkley, Paul Thergard, Sister Nellie Dockwell, Dolores Quintos, and Lawrence Donnelly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join in reciting the anniversary prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the past 50 years. You are grace and spirit have enabled our parish to proclaim the word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve our local community. In thanksgiving, we pray for all those parishioners who set the parish foundation and of all those who throughout the years have joined us in our mission in our celebrations, or have sought our help. Please continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we will always be missionary disciples who are joyful expressions of your Son within our parish and into our community. We boldly proclaim that Jesus is alive in our parish, welcoming the lost and leading us all to new life in him. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, draw near to us this Advent season your peace and joy. Hear these prayers and answer them. We make in your Son's name. Amen. Please be seated. A just reminder that the donation baskets are on the uh, way out by the exit doors.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may, be, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are claim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence will lie for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and bury our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember your servant, Ken Berkeley, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body to our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace, and we ask if you're watching us live stream to please put a note in the chat box. Peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
say to the faint of heart, be strong and do not fear. Behold, our God will come and he will save us. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Uh, so we have continued good news on uh, the progress of Deacon Miles Akta. Um, he came home on Thursday. So. And he is very anxious to get up on the altar, but that probably isn't going to happen until at least next month. So um, uh, and we said that he was totally in charge of how that's going to progress, but he said, you know, I really want to preach. And I said, if I'm on and you want to preach, you just come on and I'll let you preach. So <laughs> he's, uh, he's very much um, uh, uh, mentally ready to go and everything else. It's just his body is holding him back. He needs to figure out some of his limitations and everything else. So praise God for that. Um, as you probably know, we're sponsoring an Afghan uh, family. And um, we had a couple volunteers who said that they would bring in a dresser of drawers as, uh, and also a dining table, a kitchen dining table. Uh, and they have kind of backed out of that. And the family's coming, I think, on Wednesday. And so um, if you happen to have a spare uh, dining room table set around uh, or a dresser of uh, drawers, whatever, uh, then if you would just let Ruth know so that uh, we can make sure that we get them set up uh, in a fine manner. At this time, I would like to ask if we have any visitors with us this evening. Any visitors that are uh, brave enough to stand up and let us know who you are and where you're visiting from? Yes. My Jane Martin, and Yay! Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> you know, it's probably as warm here as it is in Atlanta, right, today? <laughs> yes. Oh, and there's a Christmas concert tomorrow. You know, just a small thing at 3 o'clock. But uh, certainly, come, <laughs> certainly come and join us for that. And get in the festive mood. Please stand for a closing blessing. Today we celebrate Gaudete, so I'd like to give you the special blessings. And in each prayer, just respond, Amen. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, Joyful in hope and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration has ended. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God.
night, everyone.